Hey, my name's John, but my friends on the internet call me Narwhal, and they also get really mad at me because I've never seen a superhero movie. So I decided to embark on a journey and watch every single one of them from 1978 to 2021. If you guys want to follow along on this journey with me as I experience these for the first time, and if you want to get my reactions and my thoughts, definitely subscribe and leave a comment because I would love to get your guys' thoughts on these movies as I kind of post each one. So I am now on movie number five of 85, and that is Superman. So first thing, I enjoyed the Superman more than the original Batman franchise by a good amount, I would say. And I think it's because obviously it's still cheesy and corny, but it's not as over the top. Like it's not as surreal as Tim Burton. I don't think surreal is the word I was looking for, but it just felt more like this universe. You know what I'm saying? It felt more familiar to real life, which for me is like a plus. Tell me why this movie from 1978 had like substantially better editing and effects, it felt like, than the original Batman from 1989. So they had 11 years for the effects to get better. But in my opinion, I don't know, like maybe I'm a lunatic for thinking this, but it felt like the editing and just the effects in general of this Superman were better by kind of a good amount than the Batman movie. I don't know that could be totally wrong, but that's how it felt. Also, I just loved the opening like 20 minutes. It's just such an interesting concept to start a story with where like your planet is go is literally going to collapse and you are aware of it and you, you know and you're planning for it, but there's nothing you can do. It's just inevitable. That would be horrifying. Like that's a real fear that people have. And imagine if we just got notified by like NASA that they're like, hey, I gigantic meteorite is kind of aiming right at us so in like a week we're all gonna be dead so have a good time that would be really scary also as soon as he said the name of the planet i heard krypton and i was like oh my god i know that other word that sounds like krypton and it's kryptonite i bet that has to do something with this movie see guys it's all adding up in here. So as I was watching this, I wrote down a note that I think I now have solved, but I originally said without any parents, he wouldn't be able to like learn any language on his journey. Cause they were playing, you know, the recordings of his father while he was in the little star spaceship thing getting sent through the galaxies. But as a baby, if you have no parents, I was like, how this means nothing to him, him just hearing those words, like, how is he going to learn anything? But then I realized he's not a human, like, and he, since he has all these other abilities, he probably just has the knowledge of like understanding communication. I assume he must have the ability to just understand communication because otherwise that scene wouldn't really make any sense. At least to me, I don't know. Maybe that is just a dumb thought. Now, this might also be a hot take, but I felt like this movie was the first of the five I've watched that was just trying to be a good movie as opposed to be a good superhero movie. And in my mind, I feel like there's kind of a distinction. The reason I, I, I'm often turned off by superhero movies is because I see someone watching it and you feel like it's trying to be a superhero movie rather than a movie that's trying to be a good movie and it has superheroes in it. And a lot of you diehard fans probably like think that that's dumb or that that's not the point. But to me, this felt like it was trying to be a good movie that had superheroes rather than the Batman movies felt like a superhero movie that was like, it was just trying to be entertaining. And it's not a crime to just be entertaining, but like, I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I don't even really know what I'm saying here. I don't even know what my stance is on this. This movie had me a lot more just like, sweaty and tense in at a lot more moments than any of the batman movies did and for that reason i just enjoyed the experience a lot more once again how the fuck do people not recognize you just because you put on a costume and took off your glasses if i had a co-worker right i i know my co-workers pretty well and then i go to the gym and someone bursts through the ceiling wearing a neon tight suit and they were wearing contacts instead of glasses I would 1000% still know, holy shit, I think that's Jerry from accounting. Anyways, uh, I love the relationship between Lex Luthor and his dumb assistant, I forget his name, but that was just the fun lightheartedness that I kind of needed. It didn't feel too like goofy sometimes or like it didn't ever take me out of it. Gene Hackman did great with Lex Luthor and uh, yeah, he's just a great actor. Now my question is how does Superman know where the people who are in danger are? Like, does he just have a spidey sense? You know, I've heard that term. I assume that's going to come into play with Spider-Man. But does he just fucking know that, like, some random person on the other side of the country is stuck in, like, underground in their car? Or is that just for convenience sake? It's just, oh, you know, he just had a feeling. Or, like, is that actually one of his abilities? Because if that's one of his abilities, like, he would be able to predict anything, right? Because he'd be like, oh, the bad guys are on their way over here. 
and I just know that. Or, you know, if he knew that, then why isn't he saving everyone? Because if he has this all-knowing, you know, omniscient power, couldn't he just save everyone from being hurt or like injured all the time? I don't know. Overall, pretty solid movie. Uh, I would watch that again one day. You know, I don't need to watch it again right away. I'm not going to be a diehard fan and buy Superman posters, but I didn't feel like it wasted my time. Eight out of 10. So there you go. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this and want to follow along on this journey with me, be sure to subscribe here. Leave a like and comment down below because it helps push it into the algorithm more. And uh, this has actually been a lot more work than I realized trying to make like an in-depth TikTok every day and then also make these videos like a couple times a week. So if you want to help me out, subscribe to my podcast called Peak to Middle School, which we're in the studio for right now. I've literally been grinding that show for years and it's really fun really funny with me and my best friend kyle and it's just an awesome show so with that being said uh there's new videos probably a couple times a week for the next superhero movies uh so yeah wish me luck